Morning guys, Morning here. Today I want to talk about AP Crit Kairos, a close range battle mage. This character is more or less the closest we get to playing an actual mage character in the game right now. The idea of the build is to deal as much damage as we can while ignoring enemy hits by healing up against them. Very similar to a venomous playstyle but with some tweaks here and there. So before we go into the specifics of the character itself, let's talk about weapons for a quick moment. I personally am using Warp and Weft, which is a sword and shield combination that gives good defensive options and a lot of damage due to the max health, ability power and crit rating on the right affinity slots. Though it sadly has a very weak weapon ability and is mostly used for stats, shield combos and well, blocking. So. Another option you could use is, as always, the Epitaph. It is the like signature weapon of Kairos and very strong. However, in this build I want to focus on the weapon and shield gameplay. But as always, you can use any weapon you would like that somewhat fits the idea and the affinities. So let's take a closer look at Kairos itself. Kairos has four abilities, Savage Rake, which is the main damage abilities, it's just claws tearing up the enemies and deleting everything, Siphon Radiant, a huge AoE that gives more Savage Rage stacks so you can use it more often, Arcane Focus, which is a single target assisting ability, and Hand of Reckoning, which is the ultimate finisher, but isn't used all that often because most of the time the enemies will be dead way before it's being up. So you want to put the points in Savage Rake and Siphon Radiance mostly for the healing and the generation of the charges for Savage Rake. For the playstyle you just want to collect Arcane Fragments with Siphon Radiant, use Savage Rake to take down groups, Arcane Focus helps on single target but rarely is needed while clearing, mostly on bosses. The defensive shield maneuvers like blocking and shield slam with break help during your cooldowns but overall you just want to play around your cooldowns mostly. Innovation orbs helps keeping up the flow because you gain arcane fragments to use, siphon, uh, to use savage break with like um, collecting innovation orbs. So mostly you just want to create a lot of innovation orbs to take down a lot of enemies which again drop innovation orbs. So you have a very very nice gameplay flow there. Also one of the main things the shield playstyle excels here is giving back arcane fragments because combo finishers granting arcane fragment stacks and for the shield you can go for very very quick combos by one light attack and one loaded heavy attack which counts as a full combo and can be done in a very quick succession to generate um, arcane rake stacks. Now let's take a look at the combo, which is one of the most difficult combos I have encountered so far, but is extremely rewarding if you get it right. You want to build up your combo meter with fast combos to 190%, use arcane focus, double jump, slam, siphon radiant into savage rake. And then you just throw savage rake until you completely run out of stacks, pick up innovation orbs and go on. This you can repeat at some point, if you run completely out of the trade stacks you just get them back up with combos and with fast combos. And yeah, this is one of the strongest combos but extremely difficult to get the timing on right. Will need a lot of practice to not lose the combo meter while doing the arcane focus double jump slam. Which can be slightly slow if you aren't very fast but is by far the highest DPS output like output you can achieve with Kairos on a boss like starting with a lot of stacks. Let's take a look at the armor sets. The armor set is very straightforward. There's a lot of AP pieces so we get nearly 40% increase AP on the um, armor set. This is uh, like very, very strong and fairly achievable with a combination of Traveler's set, Fathomless set and the Orphic Regalia which all aren't that difficult to come by. Then next up is the accessories. For the accessories we run the exact same setup as on 
Grendel, we just go with the Primordial set as the ultimate endgame set. The Primordial Amulet here is extremely cool because we don't use the um, Instinct slot at all, we just use Focus and I forgot how the last one is named, but we don't really use those so they don't matter. So the Primordial set just is the best set you can get and it can be a full 38 set if you get the Primordial Myth, which I still don't have. So yeah, it's very rare, but it can be the strongest AP crit set in the game if you get all the 38 pieces. Then earlier pieces would still be the Mutated Solar Soul set, the Hollow Heart set and the um, Evenos Caretaker set, which drop at the Bloodworks with two Soul Imbuements, the Hollow Heart boss and all dungeons with Flora Imbuement respectively. For the Echoes we just want to stack a lot of ability power and crit rating. I have listed quite a few examples here but as always you should just use the best ones you have available. For the balance it is more or less the same. We go for ability power, max health and crit rating. Some magical defense here or there but we do try to focus on offense here. For the defense and cross we go the same again. Defense just max health, some defense but overall just max health for the four slots you have and then for the cross we go ability power and crit rating mostly. For the rush echoes I currently am running the Dread Legion, Precursor Reborn, Mythic and Blood Rage of Vool setup. It is a very nice setup because it's a quick and easy and very strong combo. You get your, as I said in the combo part, you get to 190 combo meter, do a double jump slam attack, which triggers the first, the precursor and the dread legion. And the blood rage of the wool, because you're using one skill before doing the double jump, so that triggers dread legion, the double jump triggers the first, the slam attack triggers blood rage of the wool, and hitting the slam attack goes, gives the combo meter 200, which triggers the precursor. And then you have the full uptime on all your rush echoes and can just combo through. Other good options are Talon of Pyre. Actually, here's Blood Rage of Vool again. I did not take out that, but I would replace it here because we'll reduce it by the Equilibrium Echo. Because especially when running a shield, a lot of stamina can help blocking a lot of hits. So you might want to use Equilibrium as well. Astral Sephir and Fallen Greed Lord, of course, always are good options for AP builds because they are just extremely overpowered in their current state. Then take a look at Affinities. We are running 60 Discipline, 25 Focus, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> We're getting the Vicious Rag, Vicious Protection, Infused Orb, Excess Orb, and Empowering Orb perks, which just give a lot of damage and Arcane Fragments and like feed us up with the um, innovation orbs whenever we get them arcane fragments. You know what I tried to say, but yeah. It also increases our max of arcane fragments by two, which leads to five, and for some reason I can have seven. I It is like that, but I couldn't figure out why, <laughs> so you can have seven. And it increases the damage dealt for every arcane fragment stored. So you start with uh, decently high damage and then when you use up the Arcan Fragments you lose Empowering Orbs but gain Vicious Rake, which just is very very strong. So last but not least let's take a look at the Talents, which are fairly straightforward. Here we just take um, the top side and the left side just a lot of damage nodes, a lot of ability power and then Bountiful Innovation which is the bottom left node which gives um, a chance to <laughs> gain an Innovation Orb whenever we use an ability which is very important for keeping up the combo um, and should be taken first. Then you want Overwhelming Arcana and when you have the points respect to the top side to go for a better pathing and take quickening innovation and probability density which increase um, crit rating and gets down our ability cooldowns whenever we pick up innovation orbs. As you can see overall the build is very much focused around innovation orbs and 
yeah, just is a very nice way to take down enemies with just a lot of damage in a short time. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to always ask, drop them down in the comments and I will try to answer everything. Thanks for watching and see you the next time.